Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Z and in today's video, I'm going to be sharing how I think you should be starting all your Premiere Pro projects. This is very important, especially if you are someone who works in Premiere Pro every day or if you work regular enough for you to want to optimize your workflow. So of course, the default way of starting a project is, you know, you fire up Premiere Pro and then you click on new project and you just name it, let's name it uh, this project and you click on create and there you have it, your new project. Most likely the next thing is you're going to start adding your elements. So you're going to start adding footage, you're going to maybe create folders. So you'll create a folder called footage, put in your footage and maybe create another one called audio maybe. And this is fine, but if you are like me, I like to optimize my workflow. I like to optimize anything really, even outside of video editing. I just like making things easier. If you are someone who works for an agency or you even work for yourself, but you are always editing videos that are similar, then there are gonna be elements of your video editing process that you always repeat. So if it's uh, a company logo or if it's a soundtrack or if it's certain graphics that you know you're always gonna be using in your videos. So I'm gonna show you how you can optimize your video editing process by creating project templates. Let's create a new project. Uh, and I'm only doing this honestly because I wanna change the name of the project. So let's call this project template, right? And let's click on create. And there we have it. So we're gonna start creating folders that we know we most likely always need in every project. So I'm gonna create one called footage um, and another one called audio. And by the way, there's no you know specific way that's like, yeah, you should always name your folders like this when you're editing video. You could honestly name this anything. It can be in your mother tongue, it can be anything. I'm just gonna use some of the popular names that I know. So maybe graphics, uh, let's add another one maybe adjustment layers um, yeah I think for now that's fine and already this is cool because we can save this as a template and you know next time we open our project template we always know that we have these folders but I'm just gonna go a step further I'm gonna bring up a folder I'm gonna use my YouTube as an example so I, I have certain elements that I'm always using uh, for my YouTube and uh, there's certain music that I use, uh, there's certain sound effects that I have, and I usually have certain graphics. So sometimes when I'm doing like Premiere Pro uh, tutorials, I already have the icons here um, that I use, or DaVinci, I have the icons. And I also have an outro. If you've seen how my videos end, there's the ZK animation that happens. These are all elements that I know I always use in my YouTube videos. So what I can do is I can take all these folders and graphics, just copy them into the graphics folder here and take the music um, and the sound effects, send them to the audio. And I'm just gonna actually create a folder for this music. I'm just gonna say back tracks, something like that. Um, so now we know we've got uh, under alpha renders, I've got my outro. This is the outro that I was talking about that I usually use. And then I've got icons here as well, if I need them that sometimes I'll use. And oh, I actually have these, I call them Z emojis. They're just emojis that I created of myself on my uh, phone. So I sometimes use those. So now that we've done that, we can also create a sequences folder. And uh, did I spell, no, I didn't spell it correctly. There we go, sequences, yeah, that's better. And then we can add um, a sequence. So I know I mostly always do 1080p or 4K uh, timelines. So I can add a 4K, it's usually 25 frames uh, and we'll just name it 4K 25. And then we can add another sequence. Uh, this time we'll make it a 1080p and then we can just name it 1080p 25 for 25 fps yeah there we go so now we we have those two timelines and one thing that i know about my youtube videos is that i always have an outro and i'll just add this 
to the sequence and yeah it'll just notify me there's a mismatch that's because i actually rendered the outro in 24 frames and our sequence is at 25 frames per second so but that's really fine i'll just say uh keep existing settings um, doesn't really affect that much so i can just put it maybe on the top layer somewhere on the top here and one thing that i know is i also always have a backtrack so i'm just gonna add this backtrack that i've been currently using for a while and i can already make certain adjustments to it like i know i like to uh put a an equalizer on it just to edit it so that it has the right levels in comparison to the voiceover that i'll be making so um i can just add that and already make the edits that i want i just put this at like minus 18 thereabouts and this maybe 1.5 and then I usually drop this gain to about, yeah, we're gonna make it minus eight. And now the audio is gonna be soft enough for me to actually put my audio here. So I can even rename this and call it backtrack. Look, I'm, I'm being extra, but um, I just wanna show you why this is so cool. Um, and then rename this and call it voiceover so this is where i know my voiceover is going to come which is also cool because then i can open my audio track mixer which i usually use to put effects on my voiceover track it's usually the same thing i put like a multi-band compressor and i put a noise reduction uh, or denoise and i also put a d reverb and this is again bearing in mind i edit almost the same kind of video all the time so I, I use almost the same mic all the time so i just put in my settings here that i usually put and i usually in the room that i record my videos in i usually just need maybe eight percent of the denoise and the reverb let's say maybe yeah maybe even four percent it's not the room that i'm in is not pretty echoey so it's just for being extra so now i know i have my settings once i put in my voiceover on the first um, audio layer which has voiceover those effects are gonna be already there we can do the same of course for the 1080p sequence but i think this is good enough you get the idea then i can just collapse these folders um, now that we have uh them sorted let's say if you edit videos that require you to put a company logo or your personal logo over them all the time then you can also just put that at the top here so that it's already there now we can save this as a template this is where you just go here and you can say my video template right and then you can save it so this is saved in your documents and there's a, an adobe folder that sits in your documents and then you just navigate to common and you go to assets project templates that's where your template is going to sit i would like to assume that that's the same for windows you just need to uh, look for that file path but you could also search for it honestly so now i'm just gonna let me show you real quick i'm just gonna close this project so now you have two options you can either locate this file and then double click on it so if i double click it'll open our premiere pro template right but you have an even better option so i'm just going to close this project the best way is you open premiere pro and you go to new project again and in this section you go to this part where it says project template and then you just click on that drop down menu and then you look for your template and remember we named it my video template so it's this one that's here and if i click on that and then i name this um new youtube video and from here i can just say create and look at that now we have a new project with all the files that we usually use and reuse in other videos already there and we have the folders as well that we've already pre-created so now we can drag in our footage into the respective folders and if we have any extra audio that is specific for that project we can always edit the whole point of using templates is so that you get rid of all the repetition so that you don't always have to be adding the same things that you know you are always using in your videos i think this is very easy you know just firing up premiere pro going to new project and knowing that you've got your video template here and as you can see you can make as many templates as you want everything that we did when we were making this template 
is still there. So the sequences, we know that our 4K sequence has our audio, which we've already edited using the parametric equalizer. We already know that once we put our voice over in this first audio layer, it's gonna have the right compression, it's gonna have the right settings on it. We know we've got our outro ready as well. So I don't know, I really love this. I hope this was helpful. Until next time, my name is Z. Cheers.